Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm looking at the DraftKings and FanDuel NBA slate for Monday, February the 13th. We have an 11-game slate today. Let's go ahead and get into it. Um, it was a crazy Super Bowl. Could have been even better if you know the last 1 minute and 40 seconds was kind of at least played out on the field. But it is what it is. Had a great day for DFS uh, on both sides. Uh, FanDuel, we put Hertz at... MVP, Devontae Smith, Travis Kelsey, Tony, and last piece was uh, Pacheco. So that was super close to the optimal, uh, basically like five points away, I believe. And then DraftKings also did great, stacked up the three studs there. The 128 on DraftKings. Now we focus to NBA for the rest, uh, well, until baseball season starts up in a couple months. So let's get into it. First... That we're propped, I mean, first pick that we're looking at at point guard is, you know, you got a lot of guys at top end. Um, you have some questionable pieces here. Some guys with the Q tag. The one piece that sticks out, once again, with the pricing is Jordan Poole at $7,800. Just been locked in with the scoring. You know, taking 25 plus shots, or 25 shots exactly, the last two games. He's assisting at a higher clip. The rebounds are better with the minutes that he's been playing. So... You know, a couple games here, he played low minutes because of blowout against OKC. This game, just terrible shooting-wise, and I believe Curry might have played that game. So, um, at least the games without Curry, you're seeing his minutes be a lot higher. A game against the Wizards should be high-scoring. He put up 32 points against them earlier. You got to like him at home in Golden State. Second piece that we're looking at, also to see how Poole is doing. It's pretty similar, home and road splits, nothing too drastic there at shooting guard uh the utah jazz they're going to be pretty valuable until some of the pricing gets bumped up especially in a matchup against the pacers which should be high scoring um and they should still be able to be competitive against a team like the pacers i like clarkson a lot he's 6700 dollars. he got 40 minutes last game i mean they got rid of conley beasley vanderbilt the depth is super small i mean tht Played really well, and he's been playing really well, but he's like the sixth man now. And besides him, it's Rudy Gay off the bench. Uh, they just don't have the depth. It's core pieces. It's Clarkson, Sexton, Markkinen, and THT as the guys that are going to score. And then Kessler you can throw in the mix too. But I like Clarkson. He's gonna, you're going to see him take 20-plus shots every game now. He's going to be having the ball in his hands more to facilitate. Maybe some more assist opportunities. He's been rebounding better. Matchup is just good against the Pacers and what should be a competitive and high scoring affair another jazz player that i like is horton tucker because he's only 3900 dollars. he's playing those those minutes he's gives you a chance to close games too if he's playing as well as he has the last couple of games where he's chipping in with points assists were great he can give you some defensive stats as we've seen and he's a guy with some upside you know that he didn't pan out with the lakers but he's getting his opportunities with now he will get his opportunities with the jazz with the moves that they made and, you know, not expecting Westbrook to be a member of the team unless something changes. So, you know, they're going to have to rely on him to give them a spark off the bench. And he's done it. And I would say he probably has a good chance to do it again, at least to pay off a $3,900 price tag. Power forward, Draymond Green at 66 is one that I like. You know, top end, nothing crazy, really, that sticks out too much. Of 7K range, you know, maybe, you know, Ben Carroll looks okay, but... Got a lot of Q tags here. Things will change maybe. Uh, Wiggins, once again, is questionable. I mean, he's been missing a ton of games this year. So we'll see if he's able to play. If not, it's going to be a bump to pool. It'll be a bump to green a little bit with the rebounding. He's kind of flirting with some triple doubles. Maybe today could be the day he gets one. The Wizards present a good matchup against Porzingis down low. I mean, Porzingis will block shots and stuff like that. But the green will be able to rebound against him. He's not a good Porzingis, not one of the worst big man in terms of rebounding for his career. So I like Green today for the amount of stuff he's going to be able to, or amount of stats he's going to be able to fill up. And if Poole is continues shooting well or Thompson continues shooting well, Thompson had a tough shooting game last game, but before that he was hot. And Green's going to have easy assist opportunities just dishing it out to those guys. And he's been a little bit more aggressive. I mean, we scored in at least double figures, three out of five games, which has to say something at least for him. And then the final piece at center that I like, 
Yeah, Jokic looks okay. I mean, 12K against the Miami. It's not the best matchup. Miami plays slow. They, they're good defensively. So I'm looking a little cheaper. Sengun 81 maybe looks okay, but definitely foul trouble risk is going to be up there against Embiid. So looking even cheaper. 5K range, you have Capella, who gives you opportunities. Valanciunas, who looks good. And then Kessler at 56. I think you can go right back to him. Only three field goal attempts last game. Uh, that was disappointing because they just didn't look his way. I'm sure if he got some more shots, then he probably would have given you a big double-double just because he's shooting right at the basket. You know, he can get to the, maybe get fouled, and he's not the best free throw shooter, but, you know, he's better than, like, Ben Simmons, I'd say. At $5,600, a guy that can give you a double-double matchup against Pacers, good one in terms of for centers. I mean, he played off the bench against them earlier this year, and he gave you 20 and 11, and he had a good free throw shooting game that time out. He has a you know, 50 point upside. He can break the slate if he gets some block shots like he has done all year. So, those are the five picks I like right now on DraftKings. Let's talk about FanDuel. All right, on FanDuel, got four of the same picks. Well, three of the same picks in here. Clarkson looks even better on FanDuel at $6,200, point guard and shooting guard eligible. Your pay ups would be Lillard looks great in his matchup. Um, you know, Trey Young. With that shoulder, if he's out, then uh, DeJounte Murray looks amazing against Charlotte. Definitely triple-double opportunities there if there is no Trey Young. Uh, but I like Clarkson at 62. I mean, the pricing is just too good. Shooting guard, Jordan Poole, $7,800. Going to stick with him. Same price on both sides. think he gives you 50-point upside. Um, the matchup is good. They're at home. Going to be a high-scoring game. Small forward, Taylor Horton Tucker, 43. Still looks good on both sides. Cheap. Ingram also looks amazing at 78, especially if Clark, uh, CJ McCollum is not able to play today. So keep an eye out there. i would be another guy that you can easily get to in multiple spots. And then Brooklyn, now that they they brought in those uh, uh, guys from Phoenix, Cam Johnson and Bridges, that, there's just a lot of guys now with Dinwiddie, those three. And then Cam Thomas kind of got the short end of the stick last game playing just 18 minutes. So it'll be a little, maybe a little tough to project their rotation uh, KJ Martin at 5800 bucks. Like him a lot today. I like him for prop betting. He's been amazing with the, at least hitting his points scored. He's like at 13 and a half points on books. Um, and, you know, he's just been very consistent with the minutes now that they got rid of Gordon as well. And with uh, until Kevin Porter Jr. comes back, there's a need for another guy to step up and score. And he's done that. He can give you rebounds too. And has back to back games with a couple of blocks and a steal. And then at last guy at center, if Julius Randle right now, just because there's you got some questionable tags at the top, and then we have other questionable pieces here, so it would definitely be something that can change. But at his price tag, I like him. Matchup is good against Brooklyn. Now they're at home. They brought in another rebounder in terms of with Josh Hart, who's going to rebound a lot. So I still like Randle, but you could see his rebounds come down a little bit. But this matchup, he's a guy that can fill it up in all categories. And probably wouldn't be surprised if he has a 30-point scoring night today. So that's what I got. Updates will be posted on Twitter closer to lock. But thank you for watching. Best of luck. And I will catch you all next time.